Thank you for tuning in, folks. Thank you for tuning in to the Double RT Boxing Show, known as the Ready Ready Talk Boxing Show. I am your host, Mr. A. I'm ready. You ready? Let's talk that boxing. For you new viewers, a quick little rundown. What our link on the show is best fight the best. That's number one through fifteen. Whatever opinion you have of those opponents at 1 through 15, we find out when they fight. They get their ass beat. They show up to the stage. We find out. But that's the that's what the show is about, the best versus the best. From number 1 through 15, we cover the belts, which is why, strangely enough, Jeff Horn is fucking ranked so damn high in uh, the organizations as a middleweight. You know, he went from two fights... Um, well, three, but he went from uh, Gary to Terrence, then almost a year off, Fort Mondine, which you can say it was a, an Australian uh, money grab fight, but he's ranked number like three by the WBA, number five by the WBO, number 13 by um, the IBF, so he's, he's a high commodity in boxing and next if you follow the show you you heard me say it plenty of times there's money makers in boxing there's international money makers and jeff horn is an international money maker and he sees i view him as that and he sees that there's fights at 160 there is fights and that's where a lot of the international money makers are to be truthfully you know you got uh marada you got Ganufkin. Um, you could say Canelo, but I'm saying like when I say international money makers, I mean not like I'm not talking about the big stream fighters. You know, I'm talking about there's fighters that don't get praised as like I said right now. Jeff Horn, like people are like, oh fuck Jeff Horn, he ain't shit. He didn't beat Pacquiao. You know, he got fucked up by Terence Crawford, but. That dude can make you a fucking mass amount of money if you fight him. That's what I mean, an international money maker. I think you go to Australia, you fight Jeff Horn, you're gonna get bank. You go to fucking Japan, you fight Moroda, you're gonna get bank. And that's what see. That's why those fights are talking about Moroda and Jeff Horn, two international money makers. But before all that can happen, Jeff Horn has to fucking get past Michael Zarafa. Now, saying all that. Is, is it quietly being swept under the rug? Is, is, is Jeff Horn moving on to some, like, daring to be great shit? Like I said, he was just fighting Gary, what was it, Cacron, the Hellraiser, box Terrence Crawford at 147. Now, we always knew Jeff Horn was, okay, we looked at him as a big Walter Wade. Okay, we knew that. Spence, a big Walter Wade. Two fights ago, a welterweight champion. The motherfucker's a 160 champion. Yeah, it's a little trinket belt. It's a WBA um, Oceana belt. I believe it's the Oceana. You know, he's a WBA ranked number three. Yeah, Oceana middleweight title. He's ranked number three. And he's a WBO Oriental fucking champion. So the dude has belts at 160. You know... It happened in one fight. It happened in that money grab fight. But look what came from that money grab fight from Modine. The motherfucker is ranked and has belts at 160. And like I said, if this fight, if he wins this fight against uh, Zirafa, Zira, Zira, Michael Zirafa, he is go his name is going to be back on that international big stage again because he, there's international money making fights for him. Akel Brook and Jeff Horn, international money. So him fighting that once is that dare to be great shit. No one's talking about it. No one's mentioning like, hey, Jeff Horn, the 147 champion, is going on. I would get it. He didn't. He, he went up. He fought Mandine. Now he's fighting Zarafa. He's been in with a uh, stellar competition. You know, he's been in, been in with Quillen, been in with Kel Brook. So he's he's taking the Andre steps into moving into a, a higher weight class. He's taking it 
gradu he's gradually uh, taking a, a better risk fight by fight. But quietly or not mentioned at all that Jeff Horn moved up two weight classes and he's looking for big fucking fights. Garcia Spence all over again. Canelo Khan. You know, it goes on and on, but I think <laughs> Jeff Horn and hate is so real from that Pacquiao win. People don't give a fuck about what he does. Now, the fight itself, like I said, I think about the fight and, and I and I see Jeff Horn doing enough to win this fight, but he, then it comes back into mind. The motherfucker moving up two weight classes. Now, he did look good in the weight, the, um, the way in, you know, you, you, um, Michael looks okay, more of a natural 160, which he probably is, but Horn didn't look too, too uh, soft, too round anywhere. If, if you want to say, we all know appearances don't look mean shit in a boxing ring, but if you just want to play the malnutrition part, the losing weight part, you know, Jeff Horn always had a thing with. You know, cutting a few pounds right before the weigh-in. He always had that sunken eye look. He looked healthy. He looked cool. So that was a good little indicator that Jeff Horn is ready. They both sound confident as fuck. Jeff Horn sound like he, overall he knows he's the better boxer. He just got to watch out for the size. Uh, Michael's like, dude, this motherfucker's coming up. He, he's fighting off more than he can chew. I'm too quick. I'm too long for him. So Mike was expected a nice knockout, <laughs> and, and that's what happens when the smaller man steps up. You know, my, again, this is the concept of daring to be great, but just no one ain't saying it. You know, the motherfucker's going up two weight classes. You know, did he even, did the motherfucker didn't even go one fifty four. He didn't go. He he, he went one forty seven to one sixty. You know, and, and we were all like, oh, Mikey Garcia. And I get, you can say he, Mikey Garcia for expense. I don't give a fuck. Jeff Horn went up to one, 147 to 160, bro. Give him some props. Give the motherfucker some props. You know, knock. He, he said, hey, Mundine went over. Hey, he went up to 160, knocked Mundine out first round. Now, like I said, taking the Andre War steps, improving fight. It's a dangerous fight. It is a dangerous fight just for the fact that uh, the natural bigger size and the attributes that do play within the fight. Both orthodox. Now, Michael's coming in taller, longer, 5'11", 7'1 and a half against 5'9", 68. Right there, so... And we've seen Jeff Horn could fight forward. He could fight backwards. He could fight dirty. Uh, Michael's best fucking... Uh, weapon in the holsters that is, is his fucking his jab it sets up his right hand or you would say his right hand is his thing you know that's his money maker but without his jab he'd be dumping it out single jabs double jabs triple jabs so he has a jab he has a right hand and we've seen Crawford jab up Horn so Horn is available for a jab it's it's there and like I said and, and Michael being the taller man longer reach by three and a half inches whether he's taking a step back jabbing, coming forward jabbing, moving jabbing, it can be a long night for Jeff Horn. And Jeff Horn, we've seen have that broken rhythm, that drunken shit. You know, maybe he'll throw off the rhythm, throw off the aiming. And with Michael throwing that jab, he reminds me of Amir Khan. He gets into a rhythm. He gets into that Amir, Amir Khan rhythm where his speed starts working against him. You know, double jab, triple jab, he'll throw the right hand. If he's not connected on that power of that, he'll get into a very repetitive and predictable rhythm, and you, and you can start hitting him. And, and like I said, I see Michael fight twice, and I, rec and I uh, researched him through um, the Kell Brook fight. I seen him fight on the state side with the PBC Quillen. We searched him for Kell Brook. He's he hasn't changed the one one two, the one 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 two. He hasn't changed that up, and his, and his record you time can be time. You know, coming back you you can punch right after he's done. He's, he doesn't, but like that, it's the, with the reach it can be in troublesome for Horn. Michael does have that high guard, 
at least body shots open, I think, with the broken rhythm. Horn will be able to find some work. Now, it's going to be interesting. Horn is known as an inside dirty fighter, get it done, gritty, gritty style. He only did that to small ass Pacquiao. Yes, he's known for it, but he couldn't quite do that against Gary the Hellraiser. Gary was down for that shit, and he was winning that fight. So, how will the smaller, the natural smaller man, the smaller attributes of Jeff Horn do against the the natural bigger attributes? On paper and everything, it all favors and and history historically it favors Michael Zafaria, you know, Zafaria, Z- 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 um, Michael Z-, Z Rafa. It favors him historically. But will Horn be able to do his um, known inside or hustle and bustle and wrestle and tussle shit? Dirty boxing, as people like to say he is. Will he be able to do that against a natural bigger man? Can he back foot box like we've seen him do against a longer, bigger man? It's, it's going to be very interesting. Like I said, I, but I do believe the body shots are there with Michael's high guard. He is predictable within his rhythm. If I'm thinking it would be crazy as fuck if Michael does just... It just... The, the, the size difference. If it does... shot, It's like... We're overlooking it. We're overlooking 147, 160. We're just thinking Jeff Horn's a better fighter than Michael, which I think we could all say. But that size. It's, uh, it's like I said, I want to see Jeff. I, I, I want to pick Jeff Horn to win this fight. I think Michael leaves the body open, which leads him to getting hit clean in the head. But him being that natural big man, like I said, they look, they look pretty cool on the way in today. They looked like a nice little street fight. You, you wouldn't bet too much money on Michael. You know, he didn't look too much bigger than him. So I won't be surprised if the just historic weight plays a factor. And like, oh shit, Jeff Horn did get stopped. But I'm going with Jeff Horn to win this fight by uh, body shots. I think Michael, as the fight goes on, that one to. They both turn it on late though, but I think I think Jeff Horn will throw Michael's uh, repetitive rhythm off. Let's see what happens. This is a good fight though. Like I said, I'm very intrigued. It's fucking 147 dude going up to 160, and no one talks about it. The Double RT Boxing Show. I'm your host, Mr. A.